Hello. After two month absence, Ed is finally building a kit again. He waves to the camera. Warning, Ed will improvise more than usual today. In this video, several sub-assemblies will be put together. First, note the structure of this base piece. Previously, Ed assembled it backwards. Speaking of improvising, Ed adds three horizontal pieces to the first vertical bar. Then he adds one of the gear assemblies and carefully inserts the vertical structure into the base. The second vertical piece is attached on the other side, connecting to all of the horizontal pieces. Next, insert the two large gears into the chain. A small standoff piece is added to each gear. The whole assemblage is inserted into the two holes in the vertical assembly. Now, assemble the vertical structure on the other side. This time, Ed adds the bottom horizontal piece and gear assembly to the vertical piece before putting it in the base. Next, add two more standoff pieces to the other side of the large gears. Add the two other horizontal pieces to the vertical piece and make sure the large gears fit in the holes. The vertical pieces connect together at the bottom. Push them together to get a tight fit. Add the last vertical piece and push all of the horizontal pieces into place. This is where waxing the pieces is really helpful. Test that all of the gear assemblies turn, the two on the sides and the big one in the middle. Note that the bottom large gear is off-center. Next, test fit several pieces on the end of the assembly. First, a large rounded square. Sand and wax just enough to get the pieces on easily but snugly. Then a small circle. Finally, a medium circle. Using the medium circle, assemble a base piece for the large gear assembly. Place the circle in the hole of a larger connecting piece and then assemble nine leg pieces. There are three types of leg pieces, three with wide tops, two with narrow tops, and one with a short top. The connecting piece has two, one, or zero markings to indicate which type goes where. Each piece needs to be hooked in and then pushed to the center until it clicks into place. Ed broke one of the leg pieces during a test fitting. He glues it together and inserts it in place. Now lock the leg pieces in place with a large ring over the top. Note that the narrow tops go into the T-shaped holes and the other pieces go into the rectangular holes. Make sure to have the side with markings on top. The U-shaped mark goes over the leg with a short top. Ed had trouble with some of the pieces falling out. Just reinsert them and keep going. You can't seat all the pieces in one shot. You have to go round and round, pushing them in gradually until there is no gap between each leg and the top. Make sure the circle in the middle turns freely after the legs have been added. Now to add the base piece to the large assembly. After the base is on, add the small circular piece. Now it's time to put this whole assembly into the main base that we made a while ago. Keep checking both sides of the base and move the rubber bands out of the way. Once the posts are in, add the rounded rectangular piece. Next, insert a small wedge piece into the base. 
Finally, add four brace pieces into the vertical structures. However, Ed couldn't fit them in properly. He placed them in temporary positions for now. More on this later. Here's the assembly in action. When the lever is moved, the ring piece can rotate, causing the small gear assemblies to rotate as well. It's Lake and Aeth showing up for his cameo. He looks bored or confused. Next, construct a ramp piece looking something like a cage. First, connect the three ramp pieces. They have to be in the right order. Connect the top and middle piece first with an outside connector, then with a longer inside connector. Then connect the middle and bottom piece with the same two connectors. Now add the support pieces. These are numbered at the bottom and force the ramp into a spiral. Make sure the supports are in the correct orientation. Start with the first one, positioned at the bottom end of the ramp. Be careful not to stretch the ramp further than necessary. Connect the other five supports in numbered order. Lake and Aeth is back. Say hi to the audience. Ed accidentally flips one of the supports. He'll figure it out. And another is flipped. At least it's easy to spot. The last one. There, the cage is built. Now to add some end pieces. Add two rings at the top. Both need to be positioned relative to the start of the ramp. Some wax on the top would be a good idea. Unfortunately, Ed waxed the inside part of the top and not the outside. So the first ring took a bit of effort. The first ring must be pushed down all the way. There has to be enough room for the second ring. Now Ed adds some wax. The second piece goes on much more easily. The bottom ring has to be oriented relative to the end of the ramp. Keep pressing until the ring is flush with the cage. Ta-da! Next, the cage must be lowered over the gear assembly and anchored to the bottom ring. But the four support beams block the cage from lowering. Ed comes up with a compromised solution. He clips off part of the top of each piece so it will fit. Then he glues each piece in place. Finally, he puts a rubber band around all of them temporarily, so they won't fall out. Then he lowers the cage over the gears and adjusted the brace pieces until the cage touches the base.
Connect the cage and the bottom ring together. Ed's been doing this for over a year and he still forgets where the camera is. Adjust the position of the brace pieces, making sure that the cage rotates easily. Then cut and remove the rubber band. After the glue dries, the brace pieces shouldn't move. That's about it. We now have a gear assembly that actually rotates the two large gears. Celebrate this achievement by having a great day. Goodbye for now.